Welcome to the Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Passano. Airing live on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wednesday night segment of the Outer Realm. Um, say it, but pre-record. I know we always have fun to chat. Remember that. So we are pre-recording this today. Uh, so we are not broadcasting live per se, but we are broadcasting on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM from New Orleans. Uh, we are fully sponsored by the amazing people over at Folgers Coffee, uh, who just make this possible every single week. So we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We love you. Uh, big thank you to Dr. Snick, AKA Justin Snicker, for his contribution of uh, his award-winning music, of course, for our intro and outro. Uh, you can find any of his music on all popular uh, music streams, such as Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, and other amazing locations. He is everywhere. Um, tonight, we're really pleased to welcome a guest who's just so versed, oh my gosh, Dr. Teria Simonson. And the topics of discussion, of course, will be his, his new book, which is called A Short History of Nearly, in brackets, Everything Paranormal. And I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, it's going to have some parapsychology, some occult, some, you know, ancient history, ancient aliens. Like, I'm just hoping we can cover it all in one show. He's just phenomenal. Um, but tonight, please know we are going to be uh, in chat. So you're going to be able to join Amelia and I in chat again this evening. Um, you know, we always have fun. Admit it. We're, We're there right now. Time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We're right literally there now. right now, as she's telling you. I know, right? So, I know we have a couple of people <laughs> in chat because private chat room, guys. I know we don't put this out there. So we have Wayne. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. No, <laughs> I meant literally as they're listening. We are literally will be we're in the future right now. <laughs> we are. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun because we are basically like I say, you know, show nights. These are fun for us because on show night, we actually get to come in and get in the chat room with you guys and interact. And we always have a lot of fun. So we will be in chat tonight. And this will stream on all the eight platforms. And I keep saying tonight for you guys, it actually is tonight when you're seeing this. So I apologize. This gets a little bit confusing for us. Yeah. But um, I, I, I want to read off the, before um, Amelia reads his bio. I want to read off this blurb, which of course we have um, on the Facebook page. And it's Dr. Um, he discusses his research and philosophy on the paranormal going back to ancient times. He notes that while there is nearly 150 years of scientific research in parapsychology, the field is still marginalized within academia. He also talks about the responses to paranormal within the field of theoretical physics he focuses on the practical applications of psi and on the personal meaning of psi abilities to me that's just like what i know <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah it, it's like holy crud this is gonna be awesome mm -hmm. so yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to um to what he's going to have to say and i don't know that we're going to get it all covered in one segment if not, we're always happy, you know, to have our guests come back. But I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. So, um, Amelia, if you don't mind going through his bio, and we'll wait for him to come on board. Yeah, no problem. Um, his, his bio, you can find the extended um, version of his bio, well, his bio, on our Facebook page, The Outer Realm. And you can read more about him, or you can just stay tuned right now and listen 
to us. Oh, here from Salem, Oregon. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Mary. Um, <Yeah. laughs> that threw me off. Hi, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that threw me off. Okay, Dr. Tereha Simonsen is a Norwegian historian of ideas and nonfiction author specializing in the esoteric and the occult. And I was, I wrote as well, as Michelle just said earlier tonight, he discusses research and philosophy of the paranormal going back to ancient times. So please welcome our guests to the show. Um, hopefully you'll be able to, I, I hope everybody engages and gives us their thoughts and ideas on everything as well. Yeah. While he's speaking, because he is very interesting and I don't want to interrupt him. I just want to listen. <laughs> I know. I think this will be one of those um, situations where, I mean, we are really the students, but we are the students in many of our shows because some of the people who come on have interesting perspectives and sometimes it's their life's work, yes. you know? So there's so much that goes into it. I mean, this book is like 544 pages, I believe. Uh, it's massive and it's so filled and detailed. Um, you know, we just got it. So we weren't able to really peruse it very much, but we were able to, to get in on it. So you'll find the link to the book uh, right here in the description once this airs. And uh, it will be on our Facebook page as well. So you guys can go dig yeah. it up. And uh, I say definitely go in, pick it up. It's going to be well worth uh, the read without a doubt. And I see he's just popping in and we're just going to let him get settled and uh, bring him on. So um, if you guys, I mean, like I said, tonight it's kind of difficult. We'll all be in chat. We'll be in chat with you and feel free yeah. to ask any questions because we're, we're, we can always forward them on as well, you know, and have him come back, which would be a lot of fun. So here he is. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> yes, I think you know. So. <laughs> I know. The, the world is a crazy place. And we're it all is. just sort it of is. coasting along. But how are things out your neck of the woods? Well, you know, we have after two two years of pandemic, suddenly we got a crazy dictator in Europe, you know, so yes. what can I say? But uh, you have to try to stay positive and, and do what you can in your daily life and uh, be an alternative, be the change you want in the world, as Gandhi said. So, yeah. I like that. I like that. Well, welcome uh, Thank you know, you. to Thanks the for other realm. Me. Yeah, I, I know people are going to be really excited about it. So, um We'll get started because I, I just perusing over the book. I'm like, we're never going to get through all this. We may have to have him return. <laughs> part oh, yeah, one yeah. And part two. It's great. That's beautiful. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It was just so I, interesting. I, I, I was recently interviewed by Norway's foremost, say, alternative magazine, and they had planned to make one interview, but it ended up being a series of uh, three interviews, in fact. Yeah, we might need you more than three times, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Just call me and I'll be there. Yeah, we oh, may I need you it. more than three times. I'm I just looking it. at that book. I'm going, okay, he's going to have to come back like, a few oh, times. 540 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pages. Oh, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh, we definitely can't do this in one night. But no. it's one of those situations where we're going to be the students here and you are, you're going to be the one who's basically going to do a good chunk of the talking, which we like here on the Outer Realm because we all want to learn and we have, we're going to have millions of people listening and this is definitely a different approach at yes. the paranormal and parapsychology I personally love to dig way back into ancient history and find the roots of things, but a lot of people don't even know how to start. But what mm. I'd like to know is what set you on this path? Did you have personal experiences as a child? Um, like, what is it that puts you this deep into this topic? Uh, well, uh, yeah, it was uh, some childhood experiences and uh, uh, also some trusted family uh, members and friends that told me about special experiences that they had not learned, uh, uh, taught us about in school, you know. Mm. And also I was part of a Christian youth club. Um, and, you know, some people spending quite a lot of time in prayer and meditation, you know, and they also told me about special uh, things like healing and telepathy and uh, 
for instance, a friend of mine, she, she needed um, uh, needed some money to go to the US then um, uh, way back. And she had started praying to get $5,000, you know. And suddenly there appeared a check in her post uh, box for exactly $5,000. And uh, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, it was her brother that had sent it to her, but he didn't know that she needed uh, money or nor did he you know say the amount she needed uh, it was for the ticket to to plane to us and he was living in uh, in the philippines at that time and didn't uh, did not communicate at all and he's a kind of a bit reserved person you know but suddenly he felt the urge to send her five thousand dollars which as i said exactly was the amount she had wow. prayed for yeah yeah wow wow and and also my grandfather he was a machine engineer a very salt of the earth person uh, not visiting any new age uh, affairs or joining any say religious community at all but he in fact was able to hear my grandmother coming home uh, about half an hour before it happened and that was uh, say um as a rule really so um mm. uh yeah because you know back in the days uh, there were no mobile phones and no communication like that uh and uh suddenly he could hear her coming up the stairs uh opening the entrance door and uh, say like uh, appearing in the living room, but she was not there. But uh, mm -hmm. about half an hour later, she will uh, would appear in just that uh, precise that manner. So um, and that, as I have said, ha happened uh, uh, more as a rule than an as exception. And if my grandmother had started chatting with some friends from a couple of hours and come home later, then this phenomenon would appear later. So it uh, he could somehow rely on that phenomenon. And so uh, when that happened, uh, he went to the stove, start making dinner. So that would be ready for her when she came back, you know. So. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, that's a phenomenon, of course, reported from many places in the world. But it seems, some, you know, there are sociologists of religion who have studied uh, different paranormal phenomena. Uh, and this uh, phenomenon seems to happen more often in Norway for some uh, reason. And we oh. had a yeah, quite a famous professor here. Uh, he was a biologist, but also, say, the leader of the Pair Psychological Association here in Norway. And he has written a book about that. And in Norwegian, that phenomenon is called Var Döger. Um, so he, the mm. book, his book is called, it's not translated, but just to have mentioned it, uh, it's called Vardöger, the Norwegian National Paranormal Phenomenon. So so it's quite a lot of uh, occurrences of that kind here in Norway. So mm. as I said, my, 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 my grandfather and also one of the daughters in the house had the same experience with my grandmother, but the other daughter had not. So it seems to be somehow connected to, say, personal sensitivity or, or what we could say, yes. Wow. So, yeah, so that kind of phenomenon, and uh, I, I could, you know, I could go on for hours and hours with, with uh, repeating that. And also, my, uh, just to mention, to, to, to give you an idea, my, my uh, cousin and, and uh, aunt, they had a very close, uh, say, telepathic connection. So, uh, my cousin, for instance, was visiting another town, and uh, my aunt was, uh, say, having her after dinner nap and uh, my cousin would experience something quite special in this other town and then uh, she would call uh, later to, to, to my aunt and uh, when my aunt then had been dreaming uh, she had dreamt exactly the same thing my cousin was experiencing you know with the, de the detailed scenarios and everything so so they had a hotline a telepathic hotline and also with my uncle uh, her husband um, as she for instance could be in bed uh, and reading a book and her, suddenly my uh, uncle would start speaking in his sleep you know like people do sometimes right. when they are dreaming right. yes yeah. and uh, the strange thing uh, she told me was that she was reading a history book a swedish historian called the Grimberg and 20 uh, volumes, you know, and she was reading about ancient Egypt and there was some kind of uh, stele, I think it's called, you know, with uh, lots of figures and there was a text under there and she was reading that text and suddenly she started, my uncle, uh, uh, my uncle started uh, speaking in his sleep and uh, what he spoke in his sleep were the exact same words that my aunt was reading in the history book. Oh, that's interesting. 
it's very interesting. Wow. <laughs> so wow. Uh, she had this hotline with my, my cousin uh, and also uh, with her husband. And so these kind of experiences from trusted people very close to me. And later also I started, when you, when you start to become aware of these phenomena, you start to somehow observe them more closely and uh, say, if you're not aware of this, uh, the existence of these phenomena, you tend to, uh, you know, just ascribe it to coincidence. Oh, that was strange, you know, and forget about it. But mm -hmm. when you start to become more aware of that, you 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 will say notice when they happen. And also, uh, my my idea about that is your subconscious mind will somehow perceive you are interested in say getting delivered information about this and then so it will be a double win-win um, uh, thing you will become more uh, aware of them and mm -hmm. your subconscious will deliver it to them uh, to, to you more often so so i started also to somehow tune into my own abilities because these are common abilities we all have more or less but uh, mm -hmm. it's it, yeah it's talent and training uh, also so it's somehow connected to our basic consciousness, what I in my book call the mental internet, because right. just as our PCs are connected uh, or telephones or tablets mm -hmm. and so, I think mm -hmm. all our consciousnesses are connected in a kind of mental internet. So if you think uh, by, by, by uh, routine, we tend to think of consciousness as just being inside my head or inside your head or mm -hmm. in uh, your co-host's head and so, mm -hmm. but th that's not the real, uh, the, the best description. I think we have to somehow grasp the idea of uh, consciousness being a collective phenomenon which we are all logged onto and if you see it that way you know it's no uh, telepathy is no one at all because i can go to your facebook page and see ah oh, yeah she is there together with that and that uh, uh, what you call, call the airport and ah oh, she is heading for kuala lumpur or wherever mm -hmm. so so uh, the information is there really and it is right. there for everybody but right. as i said there is talent uh, some are more on musicians and some are not uh, mm -hmm. and there is training so even if you are not extremely gifted uh, say mm -hmm. like the great spiritual masters the buddha or the christ or some uh, you will still have the um, say possibility by meditation and uh, just tuning yeah because yeah to, to connect right. closer to this uh, collective consciousness and that is somehow my message of the book uh, i of course want to entertain and give stories and science mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot of science and so mm -hmm. but also as a practical application of this it's how to navigate your life a bit better and who should you hook up with which job should you apply for mm -hmm. and that kind of things so because if you're connecting to this it's very powerful you have access to much more information than in your little ego so um, and i think also it's an ethical dimension because then you are somehow connecting to uh, humanity at large and can be of better mm, service. Agree. Yeah, yeah. So. I agree. I, I think you can experiment with something like that. I've done it a couple of times where you take a very obscure word, like yes. one you don't hear very often. One of them was, it's really ridiculous. It was swell. We haven't heard <laughs> swell since like mm. the 50s, you know? Um, yes. So I put it out there and I was talking to my daughter. She said, this is swell. She was what kind of worried about swell. I'm like, I know, right? But mm. all of a sudden, I start hearing it from other people more. Mm. Mm. In, in that in the coming week and I, I i'm watching a couple of television programs and there's that word and i'm like i haven't heard this word since something i i watched back mm. like in the 70s from the 1950s from an old yeah, 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 yeah. And all, yeah. I'm like, and it's I'm a very american term we're uh. right there and all of a sudden i'm starting to hear it more and i've done it a couple of times as an experiment and i find it very fascinating that all of a sudden the word basically starts to show up whatever your word of choice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not even in the vernacular. It's not even in the Canadian vernacular. It's in the American. Yes. Yes. Which is funny. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, so that you can experiment with it. But as I said, uh, um, you know, I'm uh, into my things here. It's um, uh, it's an existential dimension to it. Also, you can b b use it as a system of uh, guidance to maneuver your life better. So, mm -hmm. of course, you can produce, uh, say, funny effects that way, as you had a very good example you gave there. Mm -hmm. But that uh, that can be used for much more, say, um, uh, profound purposes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just yeah. get, throwing something out there for laymen who are just going, that's not a thing. Yeah, just try it. <laughs> it's a very easy experiment yeah. you can try. Yeah. So, yeah. How and I share a brain. We, we actually do. share a brain when we're working. Yeah, we can tap into one another. Uh, you do? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, that is also very interesting. Uh, and just stop me if I'm getting too eager. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one of the founders of the internet is uh, the French astronomer Jacques Vallée, and he yes. is also an expert on UFOs. And he told yes. me that uh, when they started, say, building the internet, you know, it was basically what is called ARPANET. It was uh, uh, 20 universities connecting their computers to, to increase their uh, computational abilities. And they started to uh, have a little chat you know along the computations and they found that suddenly one of them was sitting with uh, an idea and suddenly it popped up from the other participants in this network mm -hmm. so it's somehow it's when you start to say connect uh, electronically and also working together on projects you start also to say develop the telepathic uh, communication so uh, interesting that you two also have experienced that we connected that way right from the start we didn't even have to work at it no, it's yeah, just, yeah, it was just one of those things that because we we work together, uh, so well, and just we're in the same like, no, yeah, like yeah. off off the the yeah. air. Yeah, and, I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah, we work yeah through you know remote viewing uh, clearings and things like that. But it's it's interesting because you have that ability to tap into people as mm. well as into the collective as yes. well. I I believe because I do it. Mm. Um, so, but please continue because this no, is, uh, uh, we're uh, your the, students tonight. So, uh, oh, you're, you're, you're giving me performance anxiety here by no. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, just you. Uh, uh, every now and then to ease it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that, that phenomenon you described that you had experimented, uh, that was also what I uh, spontaneously experience, uh, experienced quite a lot in high school. Uh, because we, we say uh, you're a student, you're hanging, you know, on the corner of the school building and so on. We are chatting mm -hmm. about informally about the thing. And suddenly it pops up a specific phrase or word in my mind. And uh, two seconds after, uh, uh, one of the persons there present uh, say, says exactly that uh, rather special phrase uh, or, or word it, it, with exactly that wording you know so it's right. not just uh, say any kind of association to the theme in general but it's a specific uh, say mm -hmm. as i said uh, you gave a good example with a very seldom used word also there can be a, a phrase that is uh, formulated in a quite a quite specific way so uh, that is also what puzzled me uh, from my own experience how could i know that he or she was going to say exact those words yeah. uh, and and uh, especially together with a good friend of mine there was a, 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 a say a girl i was uh, quite uh, in love uh, with yeah, we, we never became sweethearts, but you know, there was some kind oh, of... Oh, I uh, love that. We never became sweethearts. No. Aww. We no. were smitten. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, but, uh, and uh, afterwards, you know, uh, I had been thinking about her uh, so much. And uh, later, I found out that she, at the same time, had been thinking extremely much about me. And we didn't know about each other, you know. So, so it was kind of, uh, yeah. Aww. Well, she ended up happily married with some other guy and she is very happy today so i have have, have to just congratulate her well, sometimes <laughs> those two souls come together <laughs> but you, like see, you see stories where those two souls come together 40 years later yeah yeah it could happen you never you know, know. <laughs> you never know <laughs> no but uh then I, even uh that early i experimented a bit about that you know i was passing a house where i knew she was uh, a guest and uh, then i sent her a message telepathically I told, uh, I told her now I'm passing here I will go back fetch my jacket and pass by here about 10 minutes ago if you mm -hmm. want to meet me come out then and I went uh, home fetched my jacket I came back to this house where she was a guest and she was not there and I was quite disappointed hadn't I sent uh, her a message did it work so did it not work? yeah so I started <laughs> to work a uh, walk away you know and I had to come about 10 meters away and then she opened the door and came out. Wow. And, yeah. So, so, so a delayed message. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe so she I, was pondering it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? She could have been yeah. pondering it. She's like, yeah, do <laughs> I, when can I get away? Yeah, <laughs> like that. Too, though. How do you know if you're just getting a mere thought or if it's actually 
it is a telepathic message. Yeah, that's a very good. Uh, I cannot, of course, I give a general formula. You just have to uh, observe your life and see if it's possible to do that kind of things in your life. And, uh, and uh, mm. I, I, also, as I said, these things are very funny as experiments. But uh, I think it's basically I'm, I have become more serious by by uh, becoming older. You know, so now I want people uh, more like the Buddhists to use these phenomena for personal growth and. Uh, you know, uh, uh, say chasing existential meaning in life and like that. So, so uh, as, uh, the very famous uh, psychologist uh, Carl Gustav Jung, a Swiss psychologist, he had lots of paranormal experiences, and uh, he he, as you probably know, used the word synchronicity uh, about these coincidences. Mm -hmm. And he said that meaningful coincidences uh, uh, coincidences tend to happen uh, if you are say in a deep personal process, asking for the meaning of your life or, or in, in a crisis even. So uh, I think it's somehow. Uh, if uh, the phenomena is uh, uh, phenomena are helpful for you to guide you uh, during a difficult time, uh, then it's somehow a constructive use of them. It's uh, and you know somehow uh, it could start out as a coincidence, but if you then use it uh, and mm. include it in say in your repertoire and uh, of helpful things that just happen, or you, you just you know you go by a bush and there are some blueberries and you pick those blueberries and is there deep meaning? I don't know. Mm with mm -hmm. that but you can right. use those blue, blue, blueberries you know mm -hmm. so so uh, as humans we have to somehow know that we have level uh, limited capacity for uh, and uh, for, for say um, uh, knowing mm -hmm. everything and uh, uh, Deepak Chopra you probably know uh, quite uh, yes. a lot about yes, it. yes. he yes. said very many things are not possible for for say our common um, say day-to-day -day level of understanding it's not uh, you cannot say if that was a deep, uh, say, coincidence or just uh, what is called by chance. Or uh, so, so you have just to say, use your inner compass and navigate. And how can I use the phenomena that uh, say appear in my life, be they normal or paranormal? You know, and mm. as I say, the limit between normal and paranormal is not always uh, always clear. So, mm -hmm. no, it's true. Um, I, I completely agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Just the question popped into my head because she didn't come out right away. And I'm like, did she realize that she was actually receiving a message or is there, was there something with the translation or transmission rather with having a delay? Like, you know, cause telepathy works. Um, I mean, you work on frequency, I yes. imagine to a degree. So if you're getting jammed up, how many, how many messages kind of just sit in the ether where other people mm. are picking up that may have nothing to do with them. Exactly. So that is, uh, uh, again, the metaphor of the internet. You know, it's yes. not surfing the internet. You can go to a friend's uh, Facebook page and there mm -hmm. there must be some relevant articles uh, she or he have uh, posted right. for, uh, for you, or there must just general thing, or there could even be spam. You know, it could be right. fake fake news. It could be everything. So right. uh, the, uh, it's uh, therefore, I stress the existential aspect of this. As long as you, as a talisman in your life, have the question question for what is meaningful for, for me to use my time on, you know, uh, then somehow you will have uh, uh, what is called, uh, you can sieve, uh, isn't it called that, sieve the phenomena, and what uh, what do I need, what do I not need. So uh, instead of ca kind of objective knowing about this thing, it's more like subjective using, I think, because right. as I said, we have a limited ability to to, to, to know uh, things. So, so I, I always... Uh, have a list, uh, try to use my inner compass uh, in in which way is this uh, phenomenon here meaningful to to me uh, of course i i'm getting thrilled if i get some clear kind of telepathic message or right. something like that like, yes. yeah yeah <laughs> <She got laughs> uh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, th th this friend I, I i told you about now i asked him i uh, asked her uh, right. when she came out from 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 uh, that house i asked why uh, did you came out uh, exactly now, uh, mm. and she said, uh, "Well, uh, it it just felt right, you know, like oh. that." Yeah, and uh, and also another time we were walking uh, side by side, you know, and um, uh, I suddenly uh, I, I was thinking of, of a person with a rather special name. It's a Norwegian uh, name, and never used in the U.S. I think Leif. I don't know uh, if yeah, you, uh, like yeah, Leif, okay, like yeah, Leif like Erickson, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. suddenly I was starting. Uh, 
uh, of, uh, uh, and we had not spoken about that person, but a cousin of mine was named Leif. So right. suddenly I started to uh, think about Leif and his yeah. name was in, that is kind of a special name, as I said. Um, and, uh, you know, 10 seconds later, and I said, we had not spoken about that person at all. She suddenly starts to sing, my friend, walking side by side with me. She start, starts to sing, Leif is Leif, you know. Right. <laughs> why, did, right. why did he start to sing his name? Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. see that be kind of wiggy because you all of a sudden you just come up with something that would be strange. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. You just yes. yeah. implanting thoughts almost non intentionally yes. or intentionally. So, uh, but perhaps uh, we were in uh, say in sync uh, mentally, you know, we're good mm -hmm. friends and even potentially a bit more even. And we mm -hmm. were also working together in the same tempo, in the same rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sinking, 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 and then connecting, connecting, connecting. So I think it's uh, mm -hmm. like, it's like it with works. Amelia. Yeah. She'll yeah. do something, yeah. I'll say, don't do that. She'll go, how do you know I was going to do that? Yeah. Like, like a mama bear. bear. Yeah. Like a mama bear. And we're, we're close in age. So it's weird. But yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah. in your head, yeah. don't think I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I'm viewing, uh, when I'm viewing. Yeah. No, it's fascinating. Uh, okay. And she's yeah. the so only the, one who can do that. You're the only one who's ever been able to, um, like, I don't want to say hitch a ride, but work, work <laughs> in sync with me. You know what I mean? That kind yes. of energy yes. work. Yes. While yes. Viewing. I understand. I never let anyone in and Michelle goes in so naturally. Like it's. Just, yes. Yes. Very yeah. interesting. This. And uh, yeah. as you said, it's a, a, probably it's a metaphor also used in English. It's a, a very say, common metaphor in Norway. They say that people uh, are on the same wavelength. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's very that's a Canadian. metaphor in English as well. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. It's very Canadian. Sense. Yes, okay. Same, okay. We're on the same wavelength. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that uh, so uh, uh, you and Michelle uh, uh, apparently are very much on the same, same wavelength and frequency. Yeah. Yes. Frequent, yes. Frequency, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, so persons uh, connect in for, for different reasons. That it might be genetics, it might be personal experiences, uh, profound experiences of related kinds. You know, so there's mm -hmm. a, a vast field of uh, yeah. to All to, of to yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but um, these kind of experiences, you know, led me to, to the, the the conclusion that there uh, is something going on here. And mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, you asked about the background for. Uh, have yes, you showed? Yes. Uh, uh, our audience the, the book yes absolutely please you, do you go ahead yeah, yeah yes yeah. yes yes i will show them the check yes i've got it, it in the title here see it's a big book people beautiful Look at that. Yes, oh there can we you go. lift it up there what a beautiful cover there it is what a there beautiful cover is. Right. And the, the golden network there is, of course, the mental internet symbolized. And then the third wow. eye. In the and center. you have the eye, you know, this yes. clairvoyance, uh, collective mm -hmm. consciousness and everything, you know. So Yes. yes. That'll this be is, on this, our this, Facebook pages as well. Thank you. Thank and you. it's in the link for the show. And it's yes. going to be, uh, as you see, the title is right here, scrolling across the bottom. So people I don't, will be able to see beautiful. it. I don't think there is anyone who would not benefit from reading mm. your book. You really don't have just that one demographic. I think it, it benefits everyone. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, very nice no, to it's... hear that. You know, uh, no, but I'm, I'm glad because uh, um, one of the friends uh, that somehow uh, said you have to write a book about this uh, as an experienced psychotherapist. And he said this book will be helpful for so many people because uh, yeah. the sociologists of religion can tell us that more than half the grown up population in Western uh, countries, in fact, have these experiences uh, mm -hmm. or will have them during their life, at least once during their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So uh, and we have so many people, but they do not have a, say, a framework uh, how to understand or interpret it or uh, uh, utilize these phenomena and yes. uh, so he bought uh, when the book was ready he bought uh, it uh, was first in Norwegian then later English now in Czech and I hope to get it out in Spanish also but uh, mm -hmm. he, he, he brought uh, bought t uh, three copies and uh, placed in the, uh, the reading room for the young psychologists so that they might learn you know so <laughs> I, uh, hope you, I, I hope you put it great. out in Italian because I think it would do really well in Italy Italy is very very much changed in there every generation is walking away from the roman catholics and more into spirituality i think you yeah. would do really well there 
If you could help me, you should get the, the agent's fee for that. Yeah, I'll get my uh, uncle. He works for the government. Yeah. 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 144 yeah. pages of translating. Yeah. <laughs> he, could just, he could just sell it right there in Lake Como. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not joking. Right? You will get an yeah. agent's fee if you do that. Oh, no, I would do it just, just, just for you. I don't need that, yeah. but thank you. Okay. I think thank you would you. do really well there. They're, very, they're moving towards more spirituality than the church so they've changed uh, yeah, a lot yeah. Uh, in fact, I've been communicating with one of the most, say, famous uh, parapsychologists in Italy. His name is Bruno Severi, uh, and he's a biologist at the University of Bologna. And he was very happy uh, about the book. So, oh, and he, nice. uh, he, yes, so he's yeah, writ go. written an introduction in Italian to it uh, on on their page, uh, both on Facebook. Excellent. Yes, yes, Putting yes, the yeah. door yeah. already, Amelia is one step no, ahead. It, of you. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a good place to be. Mm -hmm. I find them changing so much there. Yeah, you know? thank you. I, I hope so. And also, if there should be kind of silver li lining to the pandemic, could be also that somehow we ask deeper, more profound questions about meaning and life, life and also a kind of humility that's still so much we do not understand or control. In uh, So I hope somehow that, uh, uh, as I said, uh, of course, the pandemic is... Uh, catastrophe but but you know even from catastrophe it's possible to to gain mm -hmm. something uh also yeah, yeah I, if, I, if you take needs, uh, excuse me no i said it needs to happen because i think humanity has i think we've been hindered from exploring that with not just religion you know mm. with a, a, and we've yes. had a, we've had a belief system implanted into us forced mm. into us and it's become conditional generation after generation you have the whole you know genetic implanting thing like yeah. it just seems to be a natural thing but mm. we're not taught at any point we're made to almost it's almost ridiculed mm. you know according to many people who who i've interviewed or or dealt with over the last couple of decades in my field um when you start talking about all of this size stuff or paranormal or abilities to be able to do all of this. A young mm. child may see a specter, even if it's a dimensional bleed through, mm. yes, um, yes. and they're taught like you're being silly, you're ridiculous. Mm. So they're taught very early on in some cases that don't even explore it. Mm. You make it feel foolish it. for mm. even exploring other possibilities. Mm. Mm -hmm. But interesting, that, that's very true. And uh, as you say, a great hindrance uh, to expanding your uh, horizon. But mm. even so, uh, uh, in uh, say the most, uh, what you could say, uh, mundane connections, mm. uh, uh, these uh, say abilities are somehow valued but not understood uh, b because mm -hmm. then it's called gut yeah. feeling and then it's all yes. right and yeah. if there was a written a book i don't remember the the author's name now but uh, he had uh, he was into parapsychology and he had checked with uh, in the us the fortune 500 uh, company ceos you know the leaders of the biggest companies in the us and mm -hmm. i think he found that uh, at uh, say uh, a majority of those would say that in uh, in uh, circumstances uh, being difficult to navigate they always used intuition and right. usually you know go with your gut uh, right, uh, yeah. and, uh, and the gut feeling and that kind of things so they are using it but they are not exactly knowing what they are using that they is they don't my, uh, sometimes they don't want to accept that term the terminology either because police officers are all highly intu intuitive in my opinion yes yes but it's constant as you say you, you know, homicide detectives, they have a great gut instinct. No, you yes. have a great intuition. Yes. You know, and I, I mm -hmm. agree with you a thousand percent on that one. But they have and, no and, idea and, what and, it is. And, and, and my last no, chapter, uh, the last chapter of my, of my book. That's all they say. Excuse me? They say pit of my stomach. I've got it in the pit of my stomach. I yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I call that intuition, but that's okay. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. Uh, or it's uh, you know catchphrase: "Go with your gut." You know? Right. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and um, uh, so uh, uh, in in chapter nine in my book, the last chapter, I discuss uh, quite. Uh, 
uh, thoroughly I intuition. And I ask, it is intuition, say uh, your uh, experienced uh, police officer, uh, is she or he just uh, capitalizing on uh, earlier experiences uh, with lots of suspects and lots of crisis situations and so? Uh, of course, there's lots of experiences there. And subconsciously, uh, is he or she using just that accumulated experience? Or is there even a dimension of uh, clairvoyance and telepathy to these, uh, say, gut feelings? Or mm. might there be at least uh, that? So I discussed that quite uh, profoundly in, uh, in in chapter nine. And uh, my conclusion is, uh, of course, to, to put it that way, <laughs> that uh, there is an extra dimension that cannot just be uh, reduced to accumulated experiences. And I take an example, which is from a wonderful book. It's called a Extraordinary Knowing by um, uh, uh, Elizabeth Lloyd Mayer. She was a professor in uh, psychology at uh, at uh, Berkeley University, California. Mm -hmm. And uh, she took an example. Uh, her daughter had a very valuable harp. And that harp was stolen uh, from their mm. car. And mm. uh, it was not possible to dig. She had to search from it, uh, so, you know, around uh, her, her, her so local district uh, for two or three months, I think it was. And then some friend said, uh, but why don't you uh, contact a dowser? And, you know, I don't know if everybody knows what a dowser is, but it's a person uh, mm -hmm. intuitively using yeah. the pendulum. Yes, yes using the pendulum. Dowsing yes, rods. yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, but this guy was using a pendulum. Uh, and yes, uh, he, his name was uh, uh, McCoy, and he, would deal, uh, he was earlier an uh, American military. I think he was, was quite uh, high up, uh, high ranked, uh, not a general, but, you know, a colonel or something, mm. a colonel, a lieutenant or something like that. Uh, and, uh, and she uh, contacted him and... Uh, and um, and uh, it was um, he was living in an, uh, uh, he was living in uh, uh, Arkansas or Arizona uh, Arizona it was so uh, and uh, he said sure I can help you I will probably help you and she sent a map uh, <laughs> uh, for, uh, over her her own town and uh, sent that map to him and he doused with his pendulum and then he said uh, marked uh, where he thought the harp might be with an x and he even gave her the street address and uh, to make a long story short, she went to that address and there was a kind of what is called uh, partly not demolished, but, you know, a, a bit uh, scruffy. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Living quarters there. And mm -hmm. uh, she, um, you know, what is uh, on, on, on this um, uh, wall, she put some kind of uh, what is called advertisement and said, have anyone seen the, like a uh, harp or, you know, uh, uh, please call this number. And so and uh, then suddenly she got a phone call that yes, uh, one of my neighbors, in fact, uh, brought uh, back uh, home a, a harp, uh, say, uh, mm. congruent with your description uh, a couple of months ago. And well, then she, uh, yeah. she, she she went to the police and said, uh, and uh, in fact, she, uh, probably because she was a university professor, so she got a search warrant and they got through this building, uh, the exact street address that Dowser had given them, mm -hmm. and uh, the police knocked on and they checked the uh, the flat and they found the harp. Well, it's, a, it's not an easy thing to hide. No, yeah. but you know, it, it, it's like uh, getting a body in and out of a building. You kind of want to do that under the night sky, but that's yeah. fantastic that, you know, he was able yeah, to yeah. find it with the awesome. pendulum. California is big and finding a harp. Oh, no, the, it's uh, amazing. It's it amazing. Is. And yeah. he was in Arizona doing that work, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah. had no, uh, no uh, say, uh, knowledge about uh, local conditions. No, or... no, I'm not saying anything no, no. to that. I'm just saying I'm amazed they got it in there without anybody questioning why is this guy carrying a harp into his place. Right. I'm amazed, <laughs> that, you know. Per mm. Perhaps he had a b black plastic bag, you know, like it could could be garbage. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Who's yeah. probably going to sell it. Yeah. I know. We yeah, have, yeah. We have yeah. Uh, people, well, one elderly man in this area who finds graves, long uh -huh. lost graves, yes. by using dosing rods, and he can uh -huh. find where you know the bodies were yeah, 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 before yeah. they'll excavate let's say they did it with an old prison they were taking the prison down but the prison had an old cemetery but nobody knew where it was so he oh. came in and he pinpointed every yeah, body and yeah. are amazing 
Yeah, yeah dancers are yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a phenomenal ability. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, uh, the Norwegian military used the dowsers uh, until uh, the mid '80s, and they really? used it. Yes, and they educated dowsers in the Norwegian military because you know wow. we had lot, lots of snow uh, in Norway, and uh, yes. if you have an uh, avalanche, uh, very often, oh, uh, yes. uh, yeah, people are taken, you know, and and what is called uh, they are swallowed by this avalanche of snow, and then often military is called in to help and then they use these uh, dosing rods to so find... uh, th th yeah they had uh, better than uh, sonar <laughs> yeah, I don't. They have stopped using them now. But uh, I read wow. the interview with the, they had two uh, military instructors with a quite high degree instructing the, what is called the privates uh, uh, about these techniques. So it has mm -hmm. been, and the, the normal, say, Norwegian way to use dowsing is for finding water. Yes. Uh, to to yes. dig, dig wells. That is the traditional right. uh, use of dowsing in Norway. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Running Things water, like running yes. water. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so, and that is very useful because you know, uh, if you are far away from the river and you're uh, running a farm, you have to have a good well to 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 make the farm work in a way. So, That's right. yeah. So, so that is also an call it an existential use of these abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Yes. So, so uh, when lots of these things, uh, you know, uh, interested me and I had some personal experiences and uh, friends told them. And, and then I read an article in uh, Norway's most serious newspaper called Often Post, uh, meaning the Evening Post. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy, a journalist who was testing psychics and he was not impressed. Oh, it, uh, no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and and uh, he referred them with name and everything, you know. So, wow. uh, yes, uh, wow. ki kind of exposing them. But right. there was one guy uh, that uh, really blew his mind. And uh, he had called this guy, he uh, that's an old traveler. You, you know, it's not exactly the same as gypsies, but uh, they mm -hmm. have the same lifestyle, you know, with uh, camping uh, wagons and uh, oh, not, not living a special place and so on. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, he called, uh, called uh, one guy and uh, this guy said, yeah, I can see you plan to go on a journey. And uh, yes, the journalist was in fact playing, but uh, of course... Uh, most people, especially journalists, are on journeys from time to time. So. But mm -hmm. this guy went on and said, yes, and I can see you are planning to go uh, visit two cities. Yes, he was going to two cities, yes. Uh, but right. what I can see <laughs> that you are you are, will end up go visiting these two cities in the opposite uh, order of what you planned. And that happened also because later they mixed up at the travel agency. So he had to go, I think it was in North Africa, you know, he had to go to, go to Marrakesh before he went to Cairo or the opposite wow. around. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and, then, and then this uh, guy said, and there will be a priest asking to join you on that journey. And sure enough, that priest appeared, asked to join uh, the journalist on the journey. I think he was going to visit some Christian monastery in Egypt or something like that, you know. So that also it's on. And he uh, ended up saying, and you will have very good use for the uh, splendid new camera, uh, camera you just uh, have bought. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just takes the right one. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, 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 I said, and said, yes, that's the guy I need to talk to. Um, so uh, I was planning to go to a date and um, I called this guy and I said, uh, uh, I want to ask you, I I'm going to a date tomorrow. And can you uh, please tell me a bit about uh, how that will work out and so And, uh, you know, he did his thing. I don't know where he uses the ter tarot and a bit of other rituals, I think. And he said, yes, she likes it quite a lot. It will be very nice and so And, uh, you know, more, say, right. gen general things. And then he said, and I can also tell you, this woman is one meter and 64 centimeters tall. Mm. That's quite specific. Uh, mm. And uh, right. are, are, you are using the metric system are, with meters, yes. are you, yes, not yes, with feet. Canada, yes. Yeah, Canada, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. US, no. because, uh, yes, because if I speak to English people, they don't know what a centimeter is. You know. <laughs> it's the, I think the United States is the only country that still That's uses imperial. Feet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, UK uh, uses uh, the feet and inches still. So. Do they oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, here it's a metric system. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
at, uh, anyway, he said, yeah. she, uh, this woman is one meter and 64 centimeters. And we went out the next day and become very nice, chatted along and good context and everything. And Did so, you get the and, tape measure? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Would you mind? Just, I should do it. You know, then, then she would go, uh, gone, oh my God, I'm dating a psycho, you know, I'm out of here. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I, 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 I'm a bit more subtle than that. You know? right. <laughs> so, uh, just uh, coincidentally, by just by chance uh, and very casually, I asked her, by the way, how tall are you? Uh-huh. And, that, and then she said, one meter and 64 centimeters. Wow. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that was really something to me. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah. next day, I called this guy up again. I said, she was, in fact, one meter and 64. How did you know? And he <laughs> laughed and said, I don't know, really. But, you know, when you ask me a question, uh, it's, uh, and I don't know uh, who used the metaphor first there, but um, uh, mm. we some the explanation was that it was like uh, making a search on the internet, you know, you have right. the search search uh, word, and then you uh, press go, and then you get lots of information, um, more or less well sorted, you know, more or less relevant for your search, and mm-hmm. such such like it was with him as well. You asking him questions, suddenly there would appear all this information, and he had to just sort and what he for some reason felt to be relevant to the the, the questioner. So, and uh, of course, it could uh, also probably appear to her uh, brother's uh, occupation or her father's height or whatever, you know, or, or, or color of hair or so, but uh, what appeared to him was her height. And the, so he told me. And right. uh, I found that very fascinating. I told him, and uh, how do you do that? Yeah, I, I, I take it from you uh, via your subconscious mind. And mm-hmm. uh, I didn't, uh, I was quite fresh to these things then theoretically. So, okay, so so somehow you read my mind then. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, he said, okay, let's try and said, mm-hmm. and my, uh, I live in, in an uh, old house uh, here in in my, my little town in Norway, and mm-hmm. it's uh, if you see the from the front, it's a, a big white wall, and mm-hmm. in the middle of this, in the, at the center of the wall, it's a, a quite big blue double door. So mm-hmm. w- when you see the house from the front, is the, the impression is a big white wall with this blue double door, right. and, uh, and he was uh, when I spoke to him on the phone, then he was uh, on holiday at uh, the Canary Islands, you know, out in yes. the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so uh, <laughs> he was not able to somehow just have a look out the window and see how uh, right. my house would look. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I told him, uh, now I will imagine the front of my house and you please tell me what do you see? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, he became silent uh, for a couple of seconds. And then he said, ah, I can see something white and I see something blue. Mm. Yeah. That's so, coming that's as vibration yeah. and frequency. The, 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 the statistic ability to get those colors, you could, it could be in green or orange or red or brown or black or, you mm-hmm. know, and um, the traditional color on the, uh, to, to just make that point then, it, uh, the traditional color of doors in my little town is green. Uh, just mm-hmm. like when you go to, you know, that tradition. So the old uh, doors here in this little town are are, are typically green. Blue Mm -hmm. is a very seldom color for doors in my little town. Uh, As opposite, if you go to Greece, for instance, there every every house is white and blue, white and blue, and white and blue. It's some kind of national colors. But here in my little town, it's white and green, white and green, white and green, you know. But he uh, pinpointed the white and the blue. Not green, so mm-hmm. I was quite impressed. So uh, he on the centimeter, he had given me the correct height of this woman, and uh, mm-hmm. also uh, taken the challenge, you know, uh, right away without having a possibility to go to Google Maps or anything. Mm-hmm. He's told me the, the the colors of my house. So you know that was somehow uh, I think it's kind of a, a aha moment for me that I have how to go seriously into this. And um, then I started to study parapsychology also as an academic, you know. I, I have a, I'm a historian of ideas and mm-hmm. uh, my my um, 
mentor at the University of Oslo, Professor Jan Erik Ebbeste Hansen. He is considered Norway's perhaps foremost expert on mysticism and occultism and esotericism and all that kind of, uh, say, weird, mm. weird stuff, which right. is also a very important part of the history of uh, uh, philosophy. But it's mm. more the, what is the, uh, the undercurrent of the history of Western history of philosophy. Mm. You know, so he is an expert, and I also, uh, uh, by his guidance, uh, I wrote a dissertation about uh, uh, anthroposophy. You know, this uh, esoteric uh, teachings of uh, Austrian. Uh, uh, occultist and, and the esoterist uh, Rudolf Steiner. So um, both my own studies within parapsychology and I also studied esoteric traditions of kind of, you know, uh, uh, like uh, hermeticism, uh, uh, English golden dawn tradition, uh, agnostic, mm. agnosticism, uh, uh, yes. Sufi, Sufi tradition, the Jewish Kabbalah and all this kinds. But yes. also uh, parallel, I'll also get an academic education, uh, solid am- academic education in esoteric traditions and 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 anthroposophy then so so all this combined was part of my um, say uh, mental framework and and um, uh, and uh, uh, to make it again a long story short i i uh, my mother passed away and i had be, be become very tired because i worked as a nurse for her the last year before she passed away so i was mm-hmm. very tired and uh, did not have a normal job and so and i thought how do i get some money now and mm-hmm. uh, uh, and then my friend, this experienced psychotherapist, said, uh, write a book about these phenomena. And uh, somehow I started to collect both my personal experiences, but also my academic background and lots mm-hmm. and lots of anecdotes from famous persons, uh, American presidents, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, you will find that many of the chaps are based on uh, uh, anecdotes about uh, famous scientists uh, having made discoveries based on clairvoyance, for instance. Also, the military use uh, mm-hmm. of a clairvoyance and spies and all that kind of things. So combining my personal interest with uh, the, the vast field of, uh, say, uh, scholarly uh, uh, studies done in, in this, and, and also uh, I, I, I like to somehow to entertain and tell good stories also. So I used to not uh, say uh, there is, of course, uh, some theoretical considerations also uh, uh, in the book and, and some, some kind of uh, rigorous science. But uh, the... W- lots and lots of uh, entertaining anecdotes uh, because I Mm -hmm. feel somehow stories is what somehow engage uh, me <laughs> the most and uh, my experiences also if you want to get people you know really involved you have to have good stories you so, have to give them a story it's hard yes. for people I think to get their heads around mm-hmm. academics on average yes. it becomes too complicated yes especially after a long day you know you want to sit down with a book it's easier to read a story and get exactly. drawn in than to yeah, try to look at statistics text. or yes yes yeah absolutely so, so so you can relate to stories and uh, yeah. most most people have an uh, uh, say and uh, old uh, eccentric aunt that can tell when people in the neighborhood will die or something like yes, that. Of so, course. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all yes. over Europe, isn't it? Though, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I, I didn't hear you. Please repeat. What did you say? Uh, that's Amelia. all over Europe. Yeah, she said yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, over yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, yeah, yes, I lost yes. my earbud. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's yeah, all over yeah, Europe. Yeah. You always yeah, have yeah. that one in the village, especially yes, in Italy, have... who's going to tell you everything. Yes, but, yes What I exactly. also find interesting with bearing that in mind, going into that exactly, that one person in the village, is oral history from mm. the indigenous going back even to ancestral stuff, because I think it was just more accepted. It's funny, yes. it was way back, hundreds or thousands of years ago, it was an accepted thing. People mm. would purposely seek out, you know, oracles, much like people seek out mediums. Oh, yes. Oh, today. yes. But they weren't, somewhere along the line, people stopped being open-minded in this day and age. Mm. Mm. Except the indigenous people with yes. their oral history who continue it on mm. with such, you know, a strong belief and strong mm. intention. Mm. So do you find that in your research? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, uh, one of my chapters is about anthropology. And then I go into anecdotes when uh, uh, anthropologists from our Western culture are visiting indigenous people and, and meeting with us, shamans and so. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you say shaman or shaman? I was uh, going to ask either. you that. Yeah, I was first. I was like potato, potato. I think it depends yeah. on well, tomato, see, it, tomato. It depends I on always, the individual. I'm always afraid of offending someone if I say it 
incorrectly. <laughs> I say shaman because say I've shaman always said well, shaman, but, but I've heard okay. shaman. We've heard people I've heard say shaman. shaman as well. Yeah. Even here, even here, yeah. I've heard shaman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, should we go for shaman in this oh, program? Oh, sure. Whatever, whatever okay. rocks yeah, your yeah, boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have uh, lots of uh, of good anecdotes and stories when uh, anthropologists, uh, they are meeting with the shamans and the indigenous people have uh, very special experiences. And um, then they come home and they are afraid to tell the, say, uh, mm. the seniors about this because then they can get fired because then they're not scientific anymore. They mm. are, you know, just into woo and or they have taken the psychedelic uh, of the tribe oh, yeah. uh, without knowing it or whatever you know yeah, so the uh, the, away. <laughs> yes so there's yeah. quite a lot of story but interesting enough mm -hmm. in in the american uh, anthropological society they have uh, uh, that was um, a tree uh, enthusiast uh, mm. uh, of anthropology that created and uh, get in fact uh, what is called uh, uh, you have with all this kind of when you say create an organization with all the ta uh, what is called tenant tenant tenants tenants yes and uh, and uh, you know organizational things and uh, so mm. so there, there is a department within the American anthropological society which are dealing. Uh, with these phenomena, so mm -hmm. there, uh, the, there is some uh, academic or scholarly acceptance for, for it, um, mm -hmm. but uh, generally, uh, also one of these, um, uh, I have a fantastic story where a guy is, you know, uh, he is uh, on Jamaica and uh, he experienced, uh, say, more than hundred people seeing the same things uh, happening, which are not, in fact, happening. Uh, it's, it's it's so strange, you know. It seems to be some kind of a, a collective telepathic hallucination going on it's uh, um yeah so uh, mm -hmm. his name was uh, joseph long and he wrote a book about that and he said that there is what is called uh, because these phenomena create uh, what they call in scholarly circles uh, uh, cognitive uh, dissonance you know because mm -hmm. it does not fit with the map of reality you have in the western world and therefore you have to somehow uh, deny them or as i said uh, uh, you can eventually use a lowly footnote to that this and this was reported, you know, and so, but it's d difficult somehow to integrate in uh, in our, uh, say, stock of knowledge because uh, the, the, say, perceptions are so different. Yes. But as I said, some of the anthropologists, they go into trans rituals, you know, they mm -hmm. take the psychedelics, you know, in order to form ayahuasca, as you know, have yes. become quite popular and uh, yes, yeah. they've started to organize ayahuasca tri trips. It's to very the, uh, big. Amazon. It's yes, very big yes, in Canada. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then when pe enough people uh, got these kind of experiences, then somehow it's uh, possible to talk about them in a more, say, mm -hmm. accept uh, acceptable manner. Than so. I but, think people uh, are waking up to it. They're, they're so? being seems they're so? more receptive, mm. I guess, to the possibilities that these things mm. are out there. Mm. And, and people uh, such uh, as yourself are ad adding logic to it as well. Which makes yeah. it easier for some people who are very, you know, they don't they don't want to go there. It's just like no, that's that. It's like mm. you say, it's that witchy woo woo thing. Mm. But you add logic, so like, okay, so this is something that is will be looked at. You know, yes. especially you for don't... academic people. You don't don't need to be mad to to to, to have these kind of experiences. That's right. So, yeah, no. you can be but an academic people... and still do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, some yeah, people yeah. feel that you have to be high. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not. You know, I'm, not that, <laughs> I'm not for that. I'm not for that ayahuasca experience. I've said that mm. a million times. Yeah. I don't approve of it. I don't agree with mm. it. I don't no. like being out of control and opening a door. Mm. That's well, just so who I am. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. for myself, for not yourself. for anyone. Okay. You do yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you want. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, yeah. when you open that big black door that you can't close because you're mm. not coherent, please mm. don't yeah. call me. You know, no. um, <laughs> I, I just not. have a problem with that because of the yes. field we work in and the, mm -hmm. the energies we work with. It's I not understand. something I would want so to open the door to. No, what you're no. saying is, um, and in your opinion, is this something that can open doors? You know, because I'm looking, trying to think of it from an academic standpoint now. Mm -hmm. Is this something that can open doors to, let's say, other dimensions, other parts of your mind, mm -hmm. um, to some you know, lower laying energies that are maybe hanging around waiting to infiltrate and in your life. Um, 
well, you know, I, 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 I used uh, typically I used the say a metaphor. What should I say? The the, the example. If you're starting hanging out with neo Nazis or Islamic terrorists, you know yeah. that will influence you uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a way uh, because you take up their energy and uh, you might be, of course, you might be there on a kind of therapeutic mission or something like that. But basically, you should not have uh, too much Adverse. to do with negative. Yeah. No, because you're no. facing yourself. They're they're drawing you pretty far yeah. in. And there have exactly. been a lot of reports. I know I filmed a, a show, um, a series actually, where a lot of the people who were talking about nightmares, mm -hmm. there was quite a few of them who had done mm -hmm. ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. they came back with their experience of just constant nightmares. So yes. what would cause them? Did you just go so far down that mm. you come back and you're just facing things now that you can't get out of your mind? Yeah. Like, what would your explanation be for that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say we all have uh, both, uh, say, uh, horror cabinets and our treasure troves within our subconscious mind. And if you open that mm -hmm. before you're ready to deal with it, it can haunt you, really. Uh, so are these uh, alien energies? Are they, uh, mm -hmm. are they ghosts? Are they our own complexes, sure. you know? might be everything you know uh, that is not the point here it the yeah. point is that somehow they are destructive in your life and therefore you should not right. invite them in so so uh, uh, and also even uh, experience trippers you know that was uh, when they started using lsd and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. for the, uh, yeah. the, uh, therapeutic reasons they said also you should always have a constructive set and setting there was mm -hmm. a psychiatrist, Norman Sinberg. He said, set and setting. You should have the constructive mindset and the positive mm -hmm. setting. Good friends, okay. uh, safe thera uh, therapist, right. you know. Uh, so so you should, not doing this as party dope or anything like that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I have a, a kind of psychic advisor here in Norway. She is very negative towards this kind of... She feels that you very easily can open for uh, as a, something like a, a kind of spirit you are not able to get back in the bottle afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, there's a good friend of mine here in my little town. I will not name him because we are a small town here. But If it's a small uh, town, they probably already know who he is. Uh, <laughs> uh, he is it's very discreet, so I will still not good, say that. Good. But, but uh, he suffered from depression and alcoholism, and he went oh. to 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 the Netherlands, and he went through ay uh, ayahuasca and uh, 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 mescaline therapy together with a Dutch psychologist. You know, with mm -hmm. uh, yeah. soft music and lots of you know uh, pep talk and good vibes uh, uh, around. And he was more or less cured for both his alcoholism and depression after the uh, three I'm session with it. I have so, no no problem with that. I have mm. a problem. My my oh, I have to be very careful how I say this. My personal opinion, no one else is here. It's mm. not something that I believe anyone just anyone should be taking at a party or at a no, gathering. No, exactly. Um, I think it's it's an it's an invitation to something that if it's not demonic and you don't believe in malevolent energies, you will mm. have some residual effect. It's still a drug. Mm. So you should be if you're mm. using it as a therapy, it should be with the right. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Set the right yeah. set, set setting. Set Absolutely, yeah. I agree yeah. with you yeah. there. I agree with you no. there. But I, I just, uh, uh, if you may go back to the, to the indigenous people just a little, because I was, uh, I also educate, um, educated within Gestalt therapy, and uh, uh, there was just popped up a little story that's quite good. Uh, uh, my instructor in Gestalt therapy, he's a quite famous uh, Dutch doctor, uh, and he was researching a, a cancer for many years and uh, say the effects of psychotherapy on cancer patients. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he, he somehow felt his life was turning more or less into just cancer, cancer, cancer all the time. So he wanted right. to, to, to go on with his life. So he, he took also education as psychotherapist, gestalt therapist, and uh, also what is called a psychosynthesis. You know, this uh, Italian, uh, what is called, uh, I forgot his name now, but um, he, he, he uh, Italian, uh, what is called pupil uh, of uh, Sigmund Freud, who made his... Um, own version of psychoanalysis using the esoteric tradition mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, that is uh, what they call psychosynthesis then um Mm -hmm. What is it called? Oh, uh, I, I will remember it later in, in the program. Right. <laughs> yes. uh, so, but uh, this doctor, he was uh, Netherlands. You know, they had some uh, colonies uh, in South America, and there was one colony called Suriname. 
Uh, I don't know how uh, it's pronounced in, 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 in English, but Suriname, S U uh, R uh, I uh, N A M E. Suriname. Uh, so yes, and uh, there was a friend of his who had broken a leg, uh, and uh, that uh, say that uh, it would not grow, it would not heal. Uh, so that leg was broken, and they went down uh, to Suriname for some reason. Um, I think it was with the purpose of meeting a shaman uh, there, mm -hmm. and that shaman did uh, a ritual, and that uh, that leg had not uh, say healed for for several months. And uh, as I said, my 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 instructor in gestalt therapy is a doctor, medical doctor. So he examined uh, that leg uh, before the ritual mm. with the shaman. And that shaman, uh, he, he took this uh, patient and placed him in what is called, uh, if you have this uh, hammock, um, right. yes, between two trees, uh, uh, about three meters above the ground. And he was in that hammock and he was to lay in that hammock uh, for several days without, we uh, uh, was not allowed to leave. So, uh, excuse me, he had to pee his pants and shit his pants. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, must, wow. Yes. So yeah. he must be in that hammock. And uh, what happened uh, below that hammock, that, that, uh, there, there was a kind of, it was not a nice thing to do, but you know, some of the, say, uh, primordial rituals are quite brutal. So uh, yeah. the people loving animals uh, would not like this probably, but they had a black rooster. And they cracked uh, the same leg on the black rooster, oh. just as he, yes, as he had cracked his right leg. They cracked the right leg on the rooster. As I said, not a nice thing to do, but yeah. that was what it's happened. It's a tradition of the yes, people. Yes, yes, tradition. Yeah. And then they somehow, you know, uh, took this. Uh, what is called uh, when you have this uh, bandage? Uh, what is called when you. Uh, take uh, uh, you have a uh, cast cast and plaster around yeah. this leg mm -hmm. you know yeah so there was he uh, peeing his pants and shitting his pants in the hammock and three meters below was this uh, uh, black rooster with uh, some in somewhat similar situation and then all the women of this tribe went to this black rooster caressing it talking nice to it giving it the best food to the rooster and this guy was alone no food no drink just uh, shitting his pants three wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and, tough girl. And, and, and yes and the shaman doing his ritual and uh, i don't know exactly what he did of meditation or so but uh, say uh, the outward aspects of the ritual was this with the black rooster and the women and uh, the caressing this uh, this rooster and uh, after i think it was uh, close to a week uh, this guy was taken down from uh, the hammock uh, and of course, he was exhausted, uh, having not uh, eaten or drinking. So, and uh, my friend examined him. And as I said, my my my, my instructor he examined him, and he is a medical doctor. And he said the leg was healed. Wow! Yeah. Wow. But that was after they showered him. Just, just. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, and, uh, and 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 my instructor said, "I'm a medical doctor. I'm not supposed to believe in this stuff." But it happened. I examined him before, and I examined him after. So yeah. So how how do you believe this happened as a collective energy? They were healing yes, them together. Yes. Okay. yes. And 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 clearly somehow the 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 the, the, the rooster was a kind of a proxy, or a, you know, substitute for this guy. So mm -hmm. they and and he somehow, of course, was very aware of what was going on. Mm -hmm. and I don't know why. You know, it, it and other shaman might have other rituals. You know, it it somehow. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also probably this shaman, uh, you know, some people have healing abilities, so he yeah. probably he was a healer as well, you know. So w I'm not an expert on rituals, but so, as you said, it's somehow uh, amplifying a collective energy. Uh, the women's intention about healing the rooster, the shaman's intention about healing the patient, you know, yeah. get, mm -hmm. getting all to work in the same direction and woof, there you are. It, 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 it makes sense. It's funny how society is so much easier for them to believe that a collective energy can cause harm, but yet they can't believe that a collective energy can heal. It's really yeah. bad. It's really exactly. sad that way. Yeah. It is. 
and that is also uh, some of say uh, the message in my book is that uh, here is a great force for good uh, for people people very often they are just in uh, they are uh, interested in two aspects they're interested in mm -hmm. entertainment aspects okay yeah this is funny this is strange oh yeah very funny so True. and then yeah uh, entertainment entertainment you know just having yeah. shows and then it's other thing it's a horror aspect oh you can get the power or you can uh, you know dance with the devil or whatever in these things uh, but i don't like that you know the mm. the, uh, the, the great uh, kabbalistic masters the sufi masters the christian mystics you know the christ and the buddha they all want to heal the world they heal people you know that's mm -hmm. how they should use these abilities so i think you should always have your intention of doing good with them and then i think that will also protect you from any kind of negative energy in this field you know so so as long as you somehow uh, focus on your good intention you have a talisman that will protect you and help you to, to use these uh, yeah. abilities. So, so that is part of a message, how to use these things for good in your life and for the benefit of your friends and, and the world. Mm -hmm. Goes back to mind over matter. Yes, and uh, but as I said, even mind, you know, people are, as I said, they are uh, in uh, the Buddhist call it distractions, you know, yeah, just uh, 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 yeah, nothing wrong with entertainment. We need entertainment, but you know, as I said, there are more profound things about the paranormal than entertainment and and right. and uh, horror, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. See, and to yeah. to us, it's paranormal, but to that part of the world, it's normal. No, it's, uh, yeah, yes. exactly. And yeah. That, exactly. Is, that is also a, a slogan I have made. You know, you have to have some slogan. As I said, the mental internet is my kind of stock in trade, and I, I use the slogan: "The paranormal is normal." It's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, For it us, is. it is. For us, it is. Yeah. But it's very much turned into something that is entertainment. Um, I mean, the good thing about that is it's raised awareness with people who may not be giving it another thought because exactly. of, of television as misconstrued as that can be because, you know, the, you, you get the wow factor more so than the educational factor. Mm. But, you know, gratefully so people are taking something out of it and are learning things. Mm. But if when you go back again, when you go back in time, I mean, paranormal is not a thing. It is just a way mm. of life, mm. right? So yeah. how do you, I mean, I, it's not even just in the West because I think that the whole paranormal wave started in England again, you know, back in the, in the 80s, late 80s mm. with all these mm. shows. Where do you think, like, how do you separate the two, the education from the entertainment? Mm. Well, it's very difficult, and I will not do that. As you said, it yeah. can be a, a, seeing a good show can be a wake up call, but yeah. then just continue to see good shows. You know that will not help mm -hmm. you further. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I will not. You know, I'm an, I'm not yeah. a preach a preacher, but you know, uh, I have some friends. They are more interested in and in looking at shows or going to you mm -hmm. know new age fairs and uh, like that and yeah. uh, uh, instead of really asking the serious question how can i use this for the benefit of myself my family my friends yes. and the world you know right, so, right. so as i said the existential it's question an individual and, thing yeah 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 and 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 i think somehow you know i uh, i uh, be honest with you i suffered from depression and panic attacks and kind of uh, for several years so it's, mm -hmm. it's not been an easy life for me i would say uh, no, uh no yes uh and, and uh, you know my father passed away when i was four and my brother passed away oh, four years no. later oh my I'm, gosh I'm my sorry. mother became schizophrenic and passed away from cancer so so you know it's had been quite uh, so so I, I have had to ask existential question what is the meaning with my life you know mm -hmm. and i think if you ask those questions you also get kind of guidance how to deal with the paranormal if people are not asking existential question it will just be dabbling with the paranormal as right. well as with life in general you know right, so, right. so 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 therefore i stress the existential aspect and also as i said uh, i quoted uh, carl gustav jung uh, he said also that these phenomena tend to uh, happen when you are in crisis because then you activate the deeper level of the psyche and then 
uh, you have the ability to listen to that or not listen to that. So I'm very so. How should we use? It? Okay, I, 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 perhaps I would uh, advise if people ask me start a medita uh, with meditation, uh, go for walks in nature, you know, seek silence, uh, mm -hmm. hug a tree, you know, uh, listening in, uh, use silence, and also I, I've used this kind of uh, binaural beats, those kind of uh, yes. brain, mm -hmm. brain, yes, my favorite. Brain, Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. My favorite. Okay. Yeah. That has been very helpful for me. So, uh, but mm -hmm. also uh, transcendental meditation or yoga or Zen Buddhism mm -hmm. or mindfulness or any kind of kind of uh, 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 say uh, what is called training of awareness. That that yes. will be yeah. So so ask the existential question: uh, Where am I going? What do I want with my life? And also training of awareness. If you have that, you will get. I, I, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I promise mm -hmm. you will get guidance also how to deal with the paranormal in a constructive way. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I, I think if it can raise awareness, sometimes they see something that they may recognize with what's going on with them. I think it is more on an individual basis. People have to take the initiative to find the right way to educate themselves, yes. have an open mind, but don't exactly. just believe everything you see cross reference literally everything. Yes. Exactly, and then the Buddhists uh, they are quite uh, yeah. quite clever with that uh, mm. because they they say that these phenomena are real, but they can become derailments from the way you know. So you have to uh, discern is the word I think they use. And a friend of mine, he is a Buddhist, and he always talk, talks about distractions, you know, because yes. what what takes you away from your true way of a personal development. So so, as I said, if you have the the, the right focus, you will also mm. deal with the paranormal in a right and constructive way i think i think focus is the key word because i think life in general is a distraction you just <laughs> anything you see on television anything mm. uh, i mean media mainstream media has become strictly about you know taking taking you into someplace mm. else whether it's the news whether it's a good tv show whether it's they're mm. all distractions there's yes. a belief system that you know, we're meant to be taken off track because they, mm. you know, they powers mm. that be, whatever it is, um, don't want to see the people completely opened mm. up because that could be, I won't say dangerous, but it could make things complicated because then we ask more questions. We want yes. better answers. We're not yes. going to, we're not going to sit there and just say, well, the sky is blue. Well, why? Mm. Well, because we said it mm. is. No, but mm. really, why? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. We want real answers, dang it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, yes. and I think this is if this is a great fear. Yes, I think so. And as you say, uh, also from a commercial uh, point of view, you know, if you are not just uh, clicking, as you say, uh, mainstream media and use all the yeah. all around the clock, you know, they they lose you as a customer uh, partly, yeah. and they want to uh, bad for business, you know. So there yeah, is there is some financial interest in keeping people uh, from knowing also. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I'm so, not paranoid, but I'm just being very pragmatic. I see that people want to have, they want to hook you on their news because they want to excite your fears. It was the pandemic. Exactly. No, it's Putin. Of course, the pandemic was dangerous. Putin is dangerous. That's but still, right. you should not. Uh, I, I just read, you know, I follow the British healer, Matthew Manning uh, on Facebook. Yes. And he, he made a declaration a couple of months ago. He said, I, I do not, uh, I refuse to become a part of the collective uh, excitement. Fears and, right. and you know, if you are to, to, to transmit healing to other people, you can't yes. be scared shit uh, yourself, you know. You, you have right. to connect to the deeper level of the psyche on, uh, on the cosmos, you know. And uh, as I said, have this constructive attitude, and, and, and that will often mean that you stop clicking news all around the clock. I agree with Correct. you. I, I think yeah. everything goes into the collective, it, you know, negative information go or energy goes into the collective as much as positive stuff mm. goes into the collective. And I think if more positive stuff reinforcing yes. information went into the collective, I think you would see a whole awakening of people just going, mm. what just happened and where am I? Mm. And, and, you know, wanting those real answers. I think your book is a good start to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think if you all start getting this book and reading it out loud <laughs> to yourself and putting the thoughts and the words out yes. into the collective, can you freaking imagine? Look at that beautiful 
cover too. You, I know. I love it. There we go. That's so, a beautiful book jacket. It is. So read it out loud, read it, put it into the collective and, yeah, all and then sudden, keep it as a reference. That's right. And then you're going to have a bunch of brilliant minds walking around going, where did I get this information? Yeah. <laughs> and don't share it. Let people buy their own copies. Because when you <laughs> yeah. share those books, no, because you can never reference because you don't have it that's on true. hand. So that's let's, true. you know, make sure your friends buy their own copies. Uh -huh. I just want to get in a quick Oh, well, thank, it's, it's, thanks uh, a lot for for recommending it so warmly. Uh, I'm I'm really happy about that. I, I can't also... wait to read it. Thank you, no. thank you. So, and thank I, you. I, I I will also say that it has uh, it has received a couple of awards in the U.S. It uh, I think the most yes it received what is called a Parapsychological Association Book Award, and that is quite wow. prestigious. Uh, yes, that is. Uh, this Italian parapsychologist uh, Bruno Severi, he told me it. Uh, he considered it to be the Nobel Prize. Of we know the good stuff. Wow, that's <laughs> so really. Us amazing. Italians know the good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's actually really impressive. Congratulations! Thank I'll you. never forget um, his name. His last name is Severi. Yes. My daughter's name is Saverina. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'll yeah, never yeah, forget yeah. his name. Oh, we have to do a station and sponsor. <laughs> yeah, gotta ID, do though. the station We're ID. Get fired. Uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> we won't. You're listening to The Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and myself, Amelia Pisano. Tonight's guest is Dr. Simonsen. I hope I'm pronouncing that per correctly. Very we good. are coming to you live right now in the beautiful city of New Orleans on 105.3 FM radio, streaming on YouTube's UFO Paranormal International Public radio ufo gods and extraterrestrials radio as well as all of our facebook pages including of course canada's most haunted home of michelle de Roche, and our own the outer realm a huge thanks to uh, justin snicker aka i'm sorry i went backwards dr snick the sonic surgeon also known as justin snicker for our fabulous intro and outro you can purchase his music on amazon and Bandcamp. find justin on social media at Facebook and Instagram. Biggest and greatest thank you of all to the people at Folgers Coffee. Thank you. You have been there from the beginning with us and we hope forevermore. Thank you for supporting us and supporting the show. Without you, we couldn't be here and no one loves you more than Michelle and I. Thank you, Folgers Coffee. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And they love us, which is great. <laughs> yes. Thank God. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, that puts us at roughly the half hour point before we actually start running out of time. So what do you want to jump on next? You have a half hour. No, I, just... I, I'll go wherever you want me to go. So. Oh, well, we, we, <laughs> well you have an advantage. <laughs> you wrote the book. So. <laughs> no, so. Uh, you know, what what, what are you, 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 your listeners, well, uh, what would they like us to focus on? Well, think? I mean, our listeners are vast because there's millions of them. So they're, they, you know, they love pretty much everything we present. But for those who don't understand, what are the differences between parapsychology and mm. paranormal? Because there is a difference. Mm, and some people mm. can't separate the two. They just think mm. there's a lot yes. of misunderstanding there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, you know, uh, parapsychology is uh, uh, is to just make a formula out of it. It's uh, the uh, rigorous science. Yes. about the paranormal so uh parapsychology then you follow strict methods and th mm. their methods are even stricter than a normal psychology because they have received so much uh, criticism for being woo woo from the skeptics you know so right. they are extremely uh, cautious about to say uh, protocol and uh, uh, you say um, procedures and yes. uh, reports and uh, control and uh, avoid cheating and all that kind of things so it's a rigorous science about the paranormal and they use different kind of uh, of experiments um, mm -hmm. yeah, what is uh, they have uh, classically they use drawing of cards you know and and uh, having statistic evaluation if it's possible to say predict uh, which card is being drawn before that is in fact done mm -hmm. and uh, lots of things um, to uh, they have also done some uh, interesting experiments with brain scanners in modern times. You know, uh, mm. for instance, yeah, it's a famous experiment done on Hawaii, a hospital in Hawaii. Then they had 11 healers. 
and they have patients, different patients in uh, in brain scanner, so they could measure brain waves. You know, when mm -hmm. the healing uh, healer were doing their work. And uh, interesting uh, in, uh, enough, in nine out of eleven uh, say cases, it was uh, a clear difference uh, when the healer were on the task and where the, he or she was pausing. So you could see uh, the, the uh, her name was uh, Jean Artenberg. Uh, she was doctor in psychology. And uh, she said, uh, you could see the, the patient's brain lighting up like Christmas trees, you know. Wow. So yeah, so there you see uh, intention at a distance in the laboratory uh, measured with the brain scanner. So that is how you do parapsychology. It is rigorous science about right. paranormal phenomena. So, right. uh, but if you go into the paranormal uh, per se, you know, para means uh, it's Latin means besides. So it is what lies beside the normal, the paranormal. It's mm -hmm. just like, a, a, as I say, an undercurrent or a side current to to what is considered normal mm -hmm. uh, in our Western society. As we discussed in uh, indigenous uh, cultures, that might uh, differ quite a lot from mm -hmm. what we we consider to be normal versus paranormal. Right. So, so uh, and uh, so. So the paranormal, uh, otherwise it could be about, as I said, ghosts, it could be about aliens, it could be mm -hmm. about uh, uh, telepathy, uh, just, just yeah, yeah, dousing, you know, without controls, right. but just by experience and, and folk traditions and all that kind of thing. So the paranormal is a, a vast field and parapsychology is when you're doing a rigorous science with protocol on a specific, uh, say, mm -hmm. part of that field. So the views, let's say, on on ghosts, yes. for from a paranormal or a parapsychology standpoint, what mm. is it? Is it a dimensional bleed through? Is it just a residual energy? Like, mm. what is your stance as a from a parapsychology standpoint on yeah. that? Since that's that's a very, very, very good point. I will speak within uh, the, the 6th of April. I will be on with the most famous ghost hunter in the world, Steve Parsons. And he has made programs with National Geographic and uh, Discovery Channel. And so, and he is a technician from the Royal Air Force, the British uh, military, uh, you very know. Nice. And, and he is using <laughs> electronic equipment. If he comes to a haunted house, he will uh, install his equipment uh, to see what's going on from a purely scientific uh, way where mm -hmm. if the hauntings are they just in the mind of the person uh, experiencing it or mm -hmm. is there something say also measurable physically going on in this haunted house uh, i am not going deep into this work yet but it seems mm -hmm. to be uh, i think he has de detected some kind of deep sound frequencies going on where there are hauntings typically mm. uh, yes uh, as I said I'm not uh, I will discuss with Steve later we have had one mm -hmm. program earlier but uh, the, I will uh, say go deeper into it also there was this I think he was Canadian uh, Michael Persinger um, mm. uh, he was a psychiatrist I think he uh, made what is called the God helmet and that <laughs> is uh, yes a helmet you can put on and there is a, a electromagnetic radiation yeah, I've got that one would, Okay. Yeah. yeah but, but it can uh, cause you to have seizures, so we never yeah, use yeah. it. I've ordered okay. it. Yeah, yeah. It. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> but then, 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 uh, and Persinger also had some um, uh, some theories about uh, if you have, uh, say. Uh, areas where that often happen uh, have a, see will be ghost manifestation there could be some uh, geomagnetic field variation uh, that mm -hmm. somehow uh, instigated that experience of ghosts that is his theory that okay. our brain is not uh, isolated uh, it is somehow it of course will be influenced by say ma magnetic fields and so and and yeah. some uh, for instance in in indigenous culture they have power spots you know yes, uh, yes. a friend of mine he has been two times to mexico mexico mm, with yes, a shaman yes. there maya shaman and he was right. taken deep into the jungle to a power spot yes. uh, and uh, he had special experiences there so there might be something uh, specific about special places um, probably related to magnetic They're fields that the world. Yeah. Yeah, lines, yeah 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and that might follow some kind of uh, say fault lines it uh, there may be many reasons for these things so 
So, mm -hmm. so, so that is from one parapsychological point. But of course, there might be parallel worlds as well. So we cannot yes. exclude that there's some kind of visitors from this parallel uh, universe. Yes. Uh, that might be one. Uh, also, um, which we're going into this, also the, it can be, uh, we discussed the, the psyche is a collective phenomenon. Uh, as, uh, mm -hmm. So just as you have a <laughs> kind of driftwood in, in, in the ocean, yes. uh, there might be what we could call mental driftwood on the mental internet, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, my psychic advisor, she got lots and lots of more customers calling her when it's full moon, you know. Right. And uh, so uh, what is that? We know that the moon uh, by uh, uh, a kind of uh, gravity influences uh, rising of sea, sea, sea levels, yes. yes and it seems... It seems water, right? Yeah, so it seems also uh, it... Uh, it uh, it influences the psychic ocean in a way. So, right. uh, and we know some of these ghosts, it, it, uh, different kind of ghosts. So it's uh, not every ghost can be some kind of be treated equally because there are, right. uh, but, but some ghosts seems to appear periodically and that could be perhaps influenced by the moon's influence on sure. our collective psyche so that's sure. one uh, yeah uh, typically with some ghosts is that they are uh, going on repeat uh, a friend of mine he is a healer mm, he was uh, visiting uh, yes replay. yes yeah replay yes um uh, i will give you an example and just stop me if i'm talking mm -hmm. too much um uh, oh. he was visiting <laughs> a, a, a haunted hotel north in norway right. and he was uh, i don't remember exactly i think it was uh, room number 315 and he was sleeping there and about three o'clock in the night he was woken up and there was a fight going on he saw two people in a deadly fight on the floor you know wow. and you know hitting and beating and screaming Screaming, uh, biting wow. and screaming and so yeah and it ended with one person killing the other mm -hmm. so oh, yeah he witnessed yeah. that he witnessed that so and he went down to, he went on the down uh, next morning to check out and uh, the receptionist asked oh, have you had a good night to sleep uh, yes except for the performance i witnessed about three <laughs> o'clock during the night then right. uh, and then the receptionist said ah okay so you have seen it as well <laughs> right. So clearly many guests have reported about that phenomenon. So probably 50 years ago or so, I will not uh, say say anything sure, about it, yeah. when yeah. there have happened a murder in this room. And right. by some incidents, it seems to be recorded in the walls in a way. So when a yeah. sensitive sensitive person visit this room, mm -hmm. it, it, it he or she will experience that going on repeat, going on repeat, going on repeat, going on repeat. So I, the I, ghosts I, the ghosts yeah. are not there as persons. No, you know, it's we can, an imprint in time. I yes, think we're made up yes. of energy. We're you know, I always say we're we're you know beings of energy having a human experience sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think if you you have a dramatic enough mm -hmm. um, energy transfer or or leaving the body, for instance, would leave a huge imprint Yes, in that time and space. Y yes. It would make sense that that would replay itself mm -hmm. like like a recording. Like if you if you mm -hmm. take a voice recorder that's like a tape recorder yes. or yes. a film camera. Yes. You can't fudge that. You can capture that moment. I believe yes. it's the same dimensionally speaking. Exactly. That's how I view it as well. Okay. And the person being sensitive, being able to experience that, the person being non certain not getting any kind of experience of that right. at all. So, so and my, my friend, as I said, he's a healer and also quite clairvoyant. Uh, so uh, he... Right obviously it's a sensitive person then so uh right. so yeah so so that is one type of ghost and uh, as a, you know uh, one way of looking at uh, it uh, is as i said the traditional spiritualist way of looking at ghost is saying that it's a disincarnate spirit but what we are talking about now uh, as you say also is is not uh, it's an imprint the spirit mm -hmm. uh, is long gone so right. there is there is no one there really, mm -hmm. but in other cases it seems to be a kind of individual still acting or do and doing things. You know? Yeah, intelligent yes. haunting and yes. residual haunting. Yeah. A, a kind a kind of presence. Yeah. 
Uh, so, 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 so we have to divide uh, between ghosts. It can be, as I said, uh, uh, collective driftwood in the psychic field. Mm -hmm. It can be disincarnate spirits. It, uh, I think, and it can be also th those imprints we are talking about now. Mm -hmm. So people often mix up these things, you know, and it's not easy. So you have to be scientific if you're going. Uh, in, you know, in Norway also they have lots of quite good programs when uh, they uh, visit haunted houses and so. And yes. uh, w uh, very many of the phenomena are real. And uh, I even saw, uh, quite uh, impressively, I saw they visited a kitchen that was haunted and suddenly it was caught on camera. Lots of forks and knives were fleeing out of a mm. uh, drawer, you know, right. it, it, fleeing out uh, as a cluster and ending up in, in, in the roof, you know. Uh, and it was not fake at all. You could see that. Right. Uh, but does that mean that a uh, former owner of the house is still there? <laughs> Not necessarily. So it's so important not to rush on conclusion with this. So no, the phenomenon... it could, be, could it be psychokinesis maybe yes, for people who, could. right, who come by? Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, very often, uh, if it's something I have learned dealing with these fem phenomena, at mm -hmm. the very often the phenomena are real, but people are rushing to conclusion, which fits right. the all, uh, already established, uh, say, horizon of understanding, map of reality. So mm -hmm. if you're going to be, uh, say, do some parapsychology uh, mm -hmm. within this field, you have to, uh, say, check on your own perceptions. And if you say, horizons of understanding and map of reality really is congruent with what is going on and or if there could be other explanations uh, mm -hmm. as well. Not necessarily, as I say, skeptical in denying the phenomena, but uh, mm -hmm. other ways of framing them. Well, I agree with you because I think you become conditioned to a religious belief systems. Like if you exactly. are religious, you're going to believe in angels and demons. If you're mm. a ufologist, you're going to believe in extraterrestrials. Um, yes. I, I think if you, what you see on television guides sets the stage for also a different type of belief system. I mm. think it's easier for people to think that they have a demon in the house, for example, than, than it is for them to think psychokinesis that they're mm. very powerful mm. energy that they're projecting exactly it's, it's, i don't understand why it's so difficult for someone to um to understand that like you're powerful beings you're more in control over your environment especially when it comes to your energy and your your frequency and you can manipulate all of that Mm. Mm, I, I, I totally agree with you and uh, I come as I said from Christian background and uh, also yeah. uh, in, in, the, in my little community if some uh, one experienced something paranormal it mm. would either be God or the devil behind it you know right. and uh, I felt that to be some kind of unnecessary uh, unnecessarily mm. limiting perspective on these phenomena uh, mm. I, I, I much more concur with what you say there and also uh, it's interesting also in Germany in uh, the University of Freiburg, there uh, is a professor, he has just become a pensioner uh, last year, mm -hmm. I think, uh, Walter von Lukadu, and he's right. a doctor, doctor in psychology and doctor yes. in physics as well. Wow. And he had an office uh, connected with the university, uh, and he was uh, had his salary from, you know, the, the, the local German state there, um, and he was uh, helping people with poltergeist, because uh, right. if you come, yeah, uh, and as I said, two, uh, two doctoral uh, degrees he had got uh, physics and, mm -hmm. and psychology so he is an expert in these things and he view it as we do now uh, more like a manifestation of psychokinesis you know right. and uh, he he has been uh, quite a number of times on on german television also and uh, if, if you for, for instance you go to your insurance company and say my, my furniture has been cracked uh, it because of poltergeist what would they tell you they no, tell exactly. you, uh, yeah yeah Aha, so, so so you your party got out of control then. <laughs> no, for, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But what but, I find interesting is how yeah. this projected energy, yes, like can how it, it remains behind. Like if you look, there's a location in England called the, the Ancient Ram Inn, and it's notorious for a poltergeist that's been there for probably like like 800 years. Okay. And people can still go there and, and you see and witness this poltergeist activity to think okay. that this was something that was self-projected yeah. that remains. What would be your explanation on the individual is long gone? Yes. So yes. how does this energy remain in this space still able to, mm. to play itself out? Like 
throwing people and throwing things mm. and what feeds that? Mm. You know, I, I know, don't know that specific place and case, so so I yeah. am, uh, should be careful about uh, concluding anything because, sure, uh, sure. you know, yeah. But in principle, you know, uh, these things can uh, also be uh, kind of self-fulfilling if uh, people uh, mm. have strong energies and they go there and they protect that energies, they somehow mm. feed uh, mm. uh, feed those phenomena yes. with there, yes. uh, so they go there with a kind of subconscious intention. No, I am going to experience poltergeist, and they will. Uh, on so they're adding to it, is what you're yes. saying. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. Yeah. So they're, yes. re they're really, yeah, like powering yes. this up with their own energy. Yes. I, I will give you a very interesting uh, esoteric concept. Uh, it's the concept of the egregory. You probably know about yes. that before. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, the, the the group soul. And uh, that is very often why magicians uh, will work in groups. Because if you are able to create, say, a group soul, mm -hmm. an egregory, uh, you will be able to do much more than by just individual intention. So right. if, yeah. And uh, also people in the Christian communities, the Quakers, for instance, they very often uh, feel, you know, they don't have a preacher, not like, say, a normal Baptist community or like right. that. Uh, very often they will just sit and suddenly one will uh, raise and have a kind of message to the others, you know. And very yeah. often you will see that this uh, many people uh, at the same time get the same message in a way. So mm -hmm. then they probably have been able to create uh, an egregory that working as, a, as I say, a, a group mind. So I think if this phenomena has continued for a long time, it might be a, a kind of group mind that is there, that is sustained by avenue visitors uh, going right. and projecting their energy into the system. That is just no, off that, the cuff, it, my it, explanation. It. Yeah. No, I think that's a great explanation. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so well, I'd like to take the next few minutes because we're slowly getting ready to to sign off. And mm -hmm. I'd like you to take the next few minutes to tell people what you have coming up, how to find you, promote, promote, promote the book. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, please, yes. <laughs> hey, keep that on the screen. <laughs> yes, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Back it up. Yeah, that's, that, there no there we go. That yeah. is the check, is. <laughs> check, check, check in version. And yes. uh, we, uh, we have the English version here. And uh, yeah. I think it's here quite recognizable with this symbol, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah, I love it. it I love the jacket. It's yes. beautiful. Thank you. I yeah, worked we, with the designer for several months to 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 reach this one. It was a hard and long process, but we, we ended up successfully. I think so. No, it's, it's very definitely. important. It's like the label on a wine bottle. It's very yes. important. That's yes, right. Thank you. I think <laughs> so. We'll make sure it's out there as well, and uh, of course, it's going to be here forever in the archive. So, so promote, promote. What do you yes, have coming yes. up? How do people find you? Yes, uh, uh, my book has a Facebook page. So if they go to the Amazon link that you you will provide them, they can find. Yes. I have a little Amazon uh, some page as well, yeah. but uh, they they can go on Facebook and uh, the book will have its Facebook page there. But there are lots of interviews and uh, different kind of things. Uh, I'm not so very active communicating with people. I should perhaps be, but uh, at least lots of say nice interviews there and so. But uh, yes. but. Um, uh, well, well, what I'm have coming up, as I said, I'm working to get the book out in Spanish. I hope to to, to be able to do that, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, also I'm giving a number of interviews. And uh, yeah, uh, is there a website I'm, that people can find you on? Uh, uh, the book's uh, Facebook page is okay. uh, where I somehow do book things. Okay, so so, um, so yeah. it's scrolling across. So we'll make sure that is also um, where people can find it, so they can go find you and follow mm. you mm. and they might if they like uh, they can use uh, that facebook page to to send me questions as well and i will there answer to the go. best of our yeah. yeah perfect uh, yeah we will go to the send message on on facebook then so i will uh, yeah so. okay yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll put up a link to the book so Amelia, i ahead. just wanted to ask you how do you pronounce your first name in uh, like... uh, the norwegian pronunciation uh, taria taria Yes, wow. yes, that's very good. Very good. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, okay. very nice. Wanted to make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. It's, a, it's an old Norwegian name meaning the spear of a Thor. Oh, oh very nice. How cool is that? <laughs> I like that. Thor. means business, that name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Ter is Thor, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. uh, the yeah is uh, an old Norse uh, word. Uh, originally, it's uh, yeah. no, we are going into linguistics here, but uh, it's uh, geir, meaning spear. So I love uh, languages, so I had okay. to ask how to say that correctly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but do. you were, you were quite impressive because that's. Uh, well, thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> coffee, uh, full just uh, coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I, I have heard lots of uh, varieties of my own name the last couple of years. So, uh, yeah. I do <laughs> too. As simple as, happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. As simple as mine is, it comes across very, very differently all the time. So, mm. right. It's yes. okay. Right. I have an right. Italian middle name, by the way. It's Cerotti. It's from Venice. You're oh, kidding. Very nice. Mm. My, 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 one of my forefathers uh, fled from Venice because they have tried to, to kill the Dodger, the, the, the ruler of Venice. So oh, they have wow. to flee. And they went on a boat and ended up in Norway. So. Wow. Uh -oh. Interesting. There you go. <laughs> There's a little bit of kinship there for you, Miriam. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, from well, Venice. <laughs> this show is going to be airing tonight at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, our time. And um, at that point, I'm sure there'll be all kinds of questions and they'll, we're going to be in chat, Amelia and I. So we're going to, at that point, redirect people to your Facebook. We will go seek oh, that yeah. out today. Yes. And Great. the archive will probably be up within a few minutes. And it hits many, many, like over 200 different sites. Beautiful. And beautiful. I will send you links to everything. And you. we're, you will hear from me anyway after the show. And mm -hmm. I like to give our guests their international listenership number so they know mm -hmm. how many people are listening. And I will then at that point, I will, you, when we're done here, I will mm -hmm. message you anyway because I do would like, I would love to see if you would come on again. Okay. I, uh, 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 are, are we on air now? Uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> I can speak freely now. Uh, can I? No, we're still live. No, we're still recording. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, but it's, it's, it was just to give you compliments. I like very much your style and your vibes you. and your attitude and your say, theoretical approach. So I'm very happy to come back some other time. Thank you. Oh, it would be our you. honor and pleasure yes. to have you. Honor and pleasure thank for you. me yes. as well. Yes. Thank you. you know, for us, it. it's very oh, important. Yeah. It's a very round table, very relaxed. And uh, that way you find yourself just going into so many different directions. Mm. It's not so regimented. We like to be different. I, I like that very much. And also, as I said, that you don't have this uh, uh, horror attitude or no. entertainment. We are we are doing series, but still entertaining. Yes. So so I like that. Uh, We've had that, too that many vibe. people say I was nervous, but oh. you you made it so relaxing. We're just like, that's what it should be. I I'm done. nervous. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I know. nervous because I'm learning from no. you. Yes. So I'm yes. nervous, you know, yeah. but no, never be nervous with us. I've Very done television and media for over 20 years, and I know how uh -huh. I like to be interviewed. I know how how it feels for me. Mm. And we never want to be like that. We want our guests to feel completely in control of the information that comes out. And Beautiful. you just you're just like I was gonna say like one of the girls, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that's an honor. So I, I uh, take that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, when I was growing up, I liked to see those talk shows with Larry King, you know. And yes. uh, he, he has also this laid back. Of course, he yep. got yes. the most celebrity guest in the world. But still, he said he just was very down to earth and did uh, was not afraid of asking any questions you know and making no. it so simple and i saw his advice was you should just trust what you have if it's people like it it's good enough if not you should find another job it's and very look at simple. how he went <laughs> he did really yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yes yes so no, so so legacy. i like this easy going style it's much better than being pretentious and you know yes, yeah. yes. Oh, we're glad. Oh, thank you Oh yeah. Yes, so so you. just call me. I'm on anytime you want me. <laughs> oh, you'll hear from me. You'll hear from me once I get off the soundboard because I now have to post this up to go live tonight. Um, so Beautiful. thank you for coming on. And thank it was you. such a pleasure. It was so informative. We, like I said, we are the students and we're looking forward to doing it with you again. Thanks you. Thanks a lot for thank having you. me. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank Namaste. you. <laughs> Good night for you. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Good night. Oh my goodness, that was fantastic. So everybody, we've come to the end of another amazing segment 
as you can see, you guys are going to love this, just saying. Um, but of course, by the time you see it, you will have seen it. So sorry, trying to work out the time thing again. But big thank you to Dr. Simonson because he was just awesome. And thank you to Folgers Coffee for sponsoring the show. Um, thank you to Justin Snicker for the intro, the outro. Please remember to stop by and subscribe to the network's YouTube channels. Um UFO Paranormal, International Public Radio, UFO Gods, Extraterrestrials. Uh, find us on the Outer Realm on Facebook. Please uh, show us some love. Give us a like. And uh, if you want to communicate with us, there's so much. Oh, my gosh. I get so many messages on social media, both of us. So please, the only way is the Outer Realm Contact at gmail.com. The Outer Realm Contact at gmail.com. So please tune in tomorrow evening. As we welcome again for the very first time, Meredith Herrenbrick. And just delightful. You guys are going to love her. She's going to be discussing family, soul, constellations, paranormal attachments, and so on. So until then, guys, please um, behave yourselves. And we will see you guys tonight <laughs> in chat. Good night. <laughs>